how to install a flexible pavement. Excavation. Ensure sufficient ground material is dug out to accommodate the required pavement layers, ensuring it is evenly formed and compacted and any soft spots are made good. Setting out. Ensure sufficient setting out is undertaken. In this video, we're using pins and a string line to achieve the correct levels and falls. Tip, measure the depths of each layer from the top of the finished paved layer downwards. Take into consideration the materials being used and where the curb is going to sit in relation to the required pavement layers. Installing the sub-base. Pour in the sub-base and roughly distribute using a shovel or machine on site. Here, we're using type 1 aggregate. Add more material as required and level off, making sure it's evenly distributed. To ensure solid compaction of the sub-base, it is recommended that you compact no more than 75mm to 100mm at any one time. Measure the depth, making sure it's to the correct thickness. Compact the material using a vibrating plate to achieve a fully compacted smooth texture surface. Installing the lane course. Carefully position two pins and create a straight string line. Drop in the screed rail. Measure from the top of the finished paved layer down to the top of the screed rail. This will help ensure the next layer is installed to the correct compacted thickness. Pour in the laying course and roughly distribute with a shovel or machinery on site. Here we're using sharp sand. Screed out any excess material using a screeding rail, the top of the curb and a screeding bar. Ensure this layer is screeded to the correct thickness. Compact the material using a vibrating plate to achieve a fully compacted smooth texture finish. Take out the screeding rail and make good the void that is left. Cover with sand and then screed over again for consistency to ensure a smooth finish. Installing the finished paved layer. Install the flags, placing in hole flags first. Check the alignment against the string line and make adjustments as required. For a sand laying course, we recommend sand joints of around 2 to 5 mm in width between adjacent units. Tip. Think about where your cuts will be and the laying pattern orientation before you start. In this application, we've used a running bond. Once the outer edge is reached, some flags will need to be cut to size. Lay the flags across the void and mark up where the cuts need to be. Alternatively, measure the void to determine the size of the cut required, then mark up ready to be cut. There are three different methods of cutting blocks. A hammer and bolster, a block splitter or a diamond tipped cutting blade. If using a diamond tipped cutting blade, use an appropriate dust suppression technique using water. Cut the blocks as accurately as possible, ensuring the correct PPE is worn. Install the paving flags and cover the final installed area with jointing sand using a brush. Here we've used kiln dried jointing sand. Make sure at all times when using kiln dry or silica sand you wear a dust mask. Compact using a vibrating plate, consolidating the sand into the joints. Top up the joints with more sand if required. Tip: During the early life of the pavement, keep topping up the joints with additional joint sand until they become self-stabilized. And here we have the completed installation. Only suitably trained and competent people should install building materials using appropriate dust suppressant methods when cutting and appropriate lifting equipment where loads exceed manual handling limits. This video is intended to complement but not replace the BS7533 series of standards, the Marshall's installation drawings and the engineer's contract drawings which should all be referred to. Appropriate PPE should be worn at all times. In addition, it's essential that the contractor carries out their own risk assessment for all activities taking place on site. These demonstrations were undertaken on a closed, secure site, 